to code can give you one of the single best return on investments in your lifetime. And the key word there is time. By simply putting some of your free time towards learning to code on a regular basis, a person can look forward to entering one of the best job markets on the planet while also gaining the power of creation. When I was younger, I thought that if I was going to enter the coding field at all, I would end up being a penetration tester or some sort of cybersecurity professional because I was obsessed with the idea of breaking systems and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. But when I started learning how to code in 2020, I realized something that really changed my life. Learning how to code gives you one of the most unbalanced superpowers in history. Because if you know how to code, you can pretty much make anything that comes to your imagination. For example, the idea of DoorDash was almost unfathomable 10 years ago. The idea that you could pick up your smartphone, tap three buttons and get a steak dinner delivered to your house in like 45 minutes is just insane. Okay, so you might not make the next billion dollar app startup, but thinking in this way can really open so many doors in your life. A couple of years ago in 2020, I really wanted to start a startup with an app being our main product, but I had no money to hire a developer with. So I decided to learn how to code so that I could make the MVP myself. I figured that there were plenty of 19 year olds that learned how to code and were able to draw huge success later in their life from it and that there was nothing stopping me. And I think the mindset that there's nothing different between you and somebody who's done what you want to do can be extremely beneficial to anybody that's trying something new or going out of their comfort zone. So I decided to make this video as a little shortcut that I would want to give myself if I could go back two years and give myself a shorter path to success. So step one, motivation. So there's a ton of people that believe that if you can't stay motivated to do something on your own, then you shouldn't be doing it. The example for this is like entrepreneurship. If somebody has to convince you to be an entrepreneur, then you probably shouldn't do it because it's pretty much terrible in every way except the money. Now, I completely disagree with this idea about motivation, but that's for a different video. From learning to code, there has to be a light at the end of your tunnel. Now, it is absolutely crucial that you have some sort of project or app that you want to release to the public, make it for a friend, make it for your parents, your brother-in-law, something that you want to create that you think will actually be used, that people need, that you need. Everybody has an area that they're passionate about outside of coding. And the idea here is that you want to make something sort of like a DLC or an add-on that'll make that area easier, more efficient, better. A classic example of this is somebody that enjoys plants or gardening, making an automatic watering system for their garden. It's completely fine if you can't think of this right off the bat. You just wanna have the idea generation going on in the background of your head when you're just going about your day, because it'll come to you eventually. I can't count the amount of times I've had really good ideas just come to me when I'm showering walking my dogs, doing the dishes, or any mundane task like that. So whether you want to create your own video game, make the next billion dollar app startup, or make your own algorithmic stock trading bot, having a goal in your mind is going to be extremely beneficial for the learning process. This is because when you're passionate about something, you can spend hours and hours in a day doing it and you won't feel burnt out because you feel like you just can't get enough time. When I was learning how to code, I actually started sleeping less so that I would have more time to code in the mornings before anybody got up. Even dealing with the bugs won't feel as bad because you'll be doing something and creating a product that you yourself want to make. It'll be completely different from the rest of your life where employers are going to be telling you what you need to code, when you need to code it, what it needs to do, how many tests you need to write, and things like that. Because for this project, you're gonna have the utmost freedom to do anything you want and create anything in it and design it in any way that you think is best, which is super awesome and it's a really fun experience that everybody should do at least once in their life. I personally have a coding bucket list that I add to on a regular basis that keeps me motivated to keep learning different things. So whether you know what your first coding end goal is or you're still thinking about it, it's time to dive right in and get started. Step two, where to learn. So there are millions of opinions on this on the internet and it's an extremely lucrative business to be in, teaching people how to code, selling courses, things like that. And so there's a ton of money traps for somebody that's just getting started in 2022. The first time I tried to learn how to code, it was in 2013 and I used Codecademy back then. This didn't amount to much. I only learned the syntax for JavaScript and Python, I think. And I didn't really do anything with it besides learning the syntax which is exactly why I told you guys to have an end goal before you start coding. 
Code Academy is really great for the basics and they have really good paid options I hear. But let's avoid paying for stuff for now because there's so much information for free on the internet that you definitely don't have to pay to get started with coding. Some other really good coding resources that are free for web development are The Odin Project and Free Code Camp. These are awesome sites that are really well maintained and they have really high quality content to help you get started in your coding journey. My true first coding experience was when I was trying to build an iOS app for my startup and I used Paul Hudson's hackingwithswift.com which is extremely, extremely well written, well thought out. It's completely free online and I highly suggest you check it out. So where exactly you learn besides the resources that I've already talked about highly depends on what area you're interested in coding. In. For example, the resources that I already talked about don't really tell you anything about game development. But a good rule of thumb is that you want to check out the top YouTube channels in the niche that you're interested in and then you also want to go to the subreddit for that coding specialization and check out the wiki page. For example, when I was interested in starting VR development, which I never did, you want to check out the subreddit Learn VR Dev. And their wiki page is really awesome and it goes into a lot of detail about what you should learn, when you should learn it, your different options for learning it, and things like that, which is really a good resource to have. Something awesome I find about using Reddit to learn development stuff is that when there's thousands of people in a subreddit, it's sort of like the information is cross-checked by thousands of people. If I had to choose a single area for you to start coding, if you had absolutely no direction on where to start, I would definitely say that Python is going to be your weapon of choice. Python is one of the most versatile coding languages. You can do data science, you can run scripts, you can write games, you can write web apps. You can do a ton with Python. It's got really awesome syntax. I use it for data structures and algorithms because the syntax is so amazing. It's got a ton of amazing third-party libraries and the resources and content behind Python is just incredible. There's so much that's been made about Python because it's gained so much popularity in the past few years. Moving on to step three, we have learning the fundamentals. So after you practice making a project and you've done a ton of it, it doesn't matter if you finished it or not because diving right in, starting it, and getting at least half of your project done is gonna give you so much insight into how coding actually works. So now that you have a basis, for how coding actually works, it's time to go back and learn some of the fundamentals. Computer science fundamentals are something that generally people learn in academia, so when you're in university or community college, but that's not to say you can't learn it on your own. There's tons of free resources, including MIT's OpenCourseWare, Free Code Camp, and a bunch of other websites. I'll link some of them in the description. There's also some really good YouTube channels for learning these things. When I say CS fundamentals, I'm mainly talking about things like data structures and algorithms, inheritance, concurrency, system programming, and system design, because it's really important to understand how these things work if you want to get a job at the top level and really understand your code from the bottom up. You don't necessarily need to know these if you're just tinkering with coding as a hobby and you like making small things, but I highly, highly recommend you look into these at least from a high level so that you can understand what you're doing better. Knowing these things is really gonna change the way that you fundamentally think about coding and about everything that you interact with in a daily basis. Once you know how coding works, you start to look at things in your everyday life completely different. For example, your smartphone, your Robinhood app, your smart camera, your smart TV, and you think, wow, this is actually just reading a code from a database that's fetching a video from another database and serving it to my phone. Now, that's not simple at all, and it's kind of difficult to get it set up, of course, and it's also difficult to scale it to millions and millions of users concurrently. But there's a huge, huge line between being completely oblivious to how all this works and knowing the basis behind it. So that if you spent a long time at it, you could probably create the same system, albeit simpler, because there's so much complexity baked into these things. When talking about building PayPal, one of the world's first online digital payment systems, Elon Musk said that a lot of people told him it would be impossible and that the security risks were just too large for this project, but that he knew on a fundamental level that all it would be doing is subtracting a number from one person's account in a database and adding to another person's account in a database. Literally two cells in a SQL database was all it would be on a super fundamental level. This is a really powerful way to think about things and I'll get into first principles thinking in a different video. That's all I have for you guys today on learning how to code. Please be sure to leave a like if you found this helpful and in the comments, tell me what your coding goal is for 2022. And also I try to respond to all the comments. So if there's any videos you really wanna see, please make sure to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you on that.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.